In this episode, I will be looking at the impact of Chinese investments in Africa. Is this neocolonialism or cooperation in the new era of Africa prosperity, growth and transformation? China is the largest developing country. Africa is the continent with the largest number of developing countries. The China-Africa economic relationship has developed rapidly over the last two decades. China has increased its investment in Africa over the last four decades. Flows surged from $75 million 2003 to $5 billion 2021. This has had both positive and negative impacts on Africa. Infrastructure improvement, job creation, and overall economic growth can be listed as positive results, leading to improved connectivity, trade, and transportation in a continent where infrastructure integration has always been challenging. Creating such opportunities in Africa has supported lower unemployment rates, particularly among young people, which is fundamental in a continent that enjoys a positive demographic bonus. Africa has approximately 90% of the entire global supply of, of platinum and cobalt, half of the world's gold, two-thirds of the manganese, and 35% of the uranium. Africa has nearly 75% of the world's coltan used in electronic devices, particularly cell phones 21. Chinese aid programs, sometimes criticized for lack of transparency, have provided African countries with grants and loans to make improvements in areas including agriculture, education, infrastructure, and healthcare. Chinese FDI into Africa went from $74.8 million in 2003 to $5.4 billion in 2018. Inflows, however, declined to $2.7 billion in 2019. However, the investment level increased to $4.2 billion despite the COVID-19 pandemic. The Chinese FDI stock in Africa grew approximately 100-fold from $490 million in 2003, peaking in 2018 at $46.1 billion and decreasing to $43.4 billion in 2020. In 2021, at the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, China committed $10 billion in private FDI for 2022. 2025. Through Chinese investments, African countries have diversified their economies and exports with greater access to new sources of income generation and economic growth and improved overall prosperity. Criticisms of Chinese investments in Africa include debt trapping economic dependence and prioritization of Chinese interests over local needs. There have been accusations of increased corruption in Africa, bribery and unfair business practices to secure business transactions. However, unlike Western governments, China has not made significant efforts to export its governance model, has heavily invested in Africa, and has not pursued the building up of a network of states obliged to supply natural resources and locations for military bases. Chinese investments have, in ever-increasing ways, profoundly impacted the continent through mutually beneficial cooperation without interference in domestic politics and internal affairs. Investments in the continent will likely increase since Africa is an essential frontier in development. Once the global situation settles after the economic slowdown, high inflation and the war in Ukraine, Chinese investment in Africa will continue to grow. How can Africa benefit from the great power competition between China, the European Union, Russia and the United States? Will China's presence in Africa be a new form of colonialism? Can China and Africa develop win-win cooperation? This episode addresses these issues based on how the Chinese presence has affected the continent. Let's look at China's historical presence in Africa. Over the last five decades, no country has gone through more changes than China. From a marginal actor and the least developed country to the largest economy in the world in purchasing power parity terms, China's path to relevance and great power status is an irreversible reality. Throughout this period, China's presence in Africa has grown from minor relevance to the continent's largest trading partner, with expectations of more, mainly due to the Belt and Road Initiative BRI. Thousands of Chinese companies have settled and are operational in African countries, with entrepreneurship growing in China and in Africa. The growing Chinese presence in Africa is not unnoticed. 
Africa has also become a territory where the clash between the great powers, particularly the United States and China, is observed by. There is much negative campaigning against China without considering the possibilities the China-Africa partnership has already generated. Such allegations repeat the usual criticisms against China. Neocolonialism, debt trapping, corruption, employment of Chinese workers, and disregard for local rights. To address such issues, China has embraced several programs to counteract anti-China sentiment and stimulate Chinese firms into positive action. Beijing has been actively modifying its approach to retaining its African foothold particularly considering that African countries have been eager to explore new development models based on local know-how, innovation, and human capital. China has also been learning about the internal politics of African countries and has been limiting its exposure level to possible defaults or instabilities derived from unstable domestic situations. One of the main arguments against the Chinese presence in Africa is that it may be implementing a new form of neocolonialism. Accusations against China also allege domination over African natural resources. Neocolonialism is an indirect form of control exerted by powerful countries that use, for their benefit, cultural, economic, and political power to exploit the labor and resources of the colonized countries. This may include control through financial agreements, investment strategies, debt trapping, and unfair investment policies mostly leading to an increased dependency due to unequal trade and exploration of resources, including biodiversity. Political pressure is exercised by interfering in domestic affairs to promote the colonizer's security interests and needs. Additionally, neocolonialism may include imposing cultural values or political ideologies onto the colonized nation, thus undermining indigenous culture, values, and identity. China has faced increasing accusations about its intentions in Africa. These focus particularly on Chinese interests in securing access to resources, trade, and military alliances and bases. China's involvement in countries with weak governance has fostered anti-Chinese sentiment and opposition. Backlashes have erupted, provoking accusations of neocolonialism and resource exploration. To both claims, China has reaffirmed its commitment to never monopolize land and access to economic growth opportunities and to modernization to secure common prosperity to reach development. China has helped build much need infrastructure in Africa, positively impacting the output of goods and services, despite some countries still facing domestic governance and corruption challenges. China has invested heavily in the continent to expand the reach of its soft power, diplomatic influence, and infrastructure initiatives to consolidate its interests and presence. China, however, has not imposed its governance model on any of the countries in Africa it has maintained an active relationship with. Through this process, China has become Africa's largest trading partner, accounting for more than $282 billion in trade in 2022. Approximately 16% of Africa's total manufacturing imports came from China in 2018, a shift in a continent that so heavily depended on Europe. 25 economic and trade cooperation zones have been created with China in 16 African countries. Such zones, registered with China's Ministry of Commerce, had attracted 623 businesses with a total investment of $735 billion by the end of 2020. Such cooperation zones have boosted local industrialization in various sectors, including natural resources, agriculture, manufacturing, and trade and logistics. One third of Chinese companies have concentrated on manufacturing, one quarter on services, and around one fifth on trade, construction, and real estate. With such initiatives, the Chinese footprint has grown to approximately 12% of Africa's industrial output about $500 billion annually. As to the infrastructure sector, Chinese companies claim nearly 50 of Africa's contracted construction market. Based on the current understanding of neocolonialism and the painful Chinese experience with European colonialism, historical memory has been a guiding principle for the Chinese to pursue a different path of relationship in which Africa is not a backyard of China's development, subject to its interference in domestic affairs. In this sense, Western countries have attached more political strings 
and exercise greater political influence than China over the domestic affairs of Africa's diplomacy. Africa has received many funds through the Belt and Road Initiative, which aims to create a new geopolitical order that will re-establish China's dominance in Asia and Eurasia. Though highly criticized by the United States, the BRI has been an essential tool of Chinese diplomacy since its launch in 2013. It's the debt trapping issue. A claim that China is luring countries into unsustainable loans to build unnecessary infrastructure and to expand its strategic and military reach has been repeated in the media, particularly after the Sri Lanka's Hambantota port situation. However, the Sri Lankan default is more related to its economic difficulties associated with the lack of tourism during the COVID-19 pandemic than the debt service it owed to China. Additionally, contrary to the argument of Chinese debt trapping, the BRI, an economic project with a financing mechanism, has been recipient-driven since its inception, with countries selecting the projects or what will be built under its umbrella. China has an appetite for large infrastructure projects because of its history and the fact that other sectors would not provide Chinese companies with the identical multiples they find in their own country, since China does not dictate what is to be built. Brick projects reflect the needs and goals of local governments. The problems some of these projects have presented result from local governance challenges that may have adverse economic, environmental, and political implications. Such situations have forced Beijing to alter course and change policies occasionally. However, because of high levels of indebtedness and financial vulnerability in some countries, debt trapping in Africa has been an accusation leveled against Chinese investments. This allegation has been based on China's significant role in providing loans for infrastructure projects under favorable terms, such as low interest rates and extended repayment periods. Such loans may become economically unviable leading to debts countries may be unable to repay. Additionally, Western critics have criticized the lack of transparency of Chinese loans in Africa with limited accountability and public scrutiny. Three situations are generally referred to when referring to this debt trapping allegation, Djibouti, Kenya, and Zambia. In the case of Djibouti, where China has built its first overseas military base and has invested significantly in ports and infrastructure, the debt levels have increased substantially, leading to concerns that, eventually, China could enhance its influence in the country and affect its sovereignty. In Kenya, China's ever-increasing infrastructure investments, notably the standard gauge railway, have faced criticism because of high costs and corruption charges and may lead the country to default 13. Zambia also received Chinese investment for major infrastructure projects energy and transportation because of falling prices in the copper industry. One of Zambia's most important sectors, the possibility of default could lead to a Chinese takeover of the country's strategic assets. Despite Western allegations of debt trapping, China should not be blamed for the challenges faced by these countries, where economic mismanagement associated with the current unstable geopolitical conditions in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Ukraine may have been the most probable causes of financial difficulties. Chinese loans have provided African countries with the necessary funding to build infrastructure and foster economic growth. Mainly through trade, filling up a financing gap Western countries have not been willing to deal with. Chinese loans have been used primarily used to develop Africa's poor infrastructure. About 40 has been utilized for power generation and transmission and 30 for upgrading outdated transport facilities 14. Chinese loans have low interest rates and long repayment periods. China has also announced that some least developed countries would be exempted from outstanding debt. The International Monetary Fund and the World Bank have played an essential role in providing the necessary guidance for responsible borrowing. As I close this episode, the most significant aspect of China-Africa cooperation has been the reduction in the dependence of African countries on their former Western partners and colonizers. The Western argument of debt trapping and neocolonialism is condescending with regards to the capacity of African countries to determine their paths and futures and to safeguard their long-term interests. Finding the best way to benefit from great power competition 
particularly between China, European Union, Russia and the United States, is Africa's most pressing challenge in the coming years. African leadership should keep a strategic distance from the players to ensure it promotes Africa's interests first. This means avoiding false narratives that may develop, particularly concerning China. Chinese development can provide three important results. A leading elite highly committed to finding and implementing long-term solutions can create new realities for its citizenry. A hard-working population who, without many of the social benefits and entitlements usually deemed essential in many Western countries, can generate growth, wealth, and most importantly savings to secure steady development. And cheap labor can go a long way in building a successful story. China-Africa cooperation should be able to create a new base from which growth can be shared more widely. The Chinese have promised neither to preach nor to interfere. Of course, funds flow as certain milestones are reached, but China does not want to convert Africa to its values. There is, however, one principle on which China wants to convert Africa. This is China's most extraordinary soft and hard power. Additionally, China can supply whatever is necessary to Africa and the world through enhanced connectivity, infrastructure, railway development, and industrialization in Africa, and by encouraging companies from both sides to explore more ways to create wealth. China's presence in Africa has been more positive than negative. Its investments on the continent have created a positive legacy in terms of infrastructure, which should serve the countries involved and help to achieve greater financial results. China has not imposed projects. Debt entrapment or its ideology on the countries where it has developed projects and joint activities. However, the narrative perpetrated by Western countries may lead to a different yet equivocated perspective. By stimulating investments in infrastructure, China projects its belief that infrastructure projects are the essential element for obtaining an improved level of development and growth. This is one of Africa's best results from this great power competition. Hopefully we have informed you as to the impact of Chinese investments. In Africa, let us know what you think about this and if China has made any significant impact in your country. If you are new to our channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share the video with your network and keep the conversation going.